This week in IT, Elon Musk isn't just tweeting, he's launching MacroHard, a new AI-powered venture to simulate Microsoft itself. ESET research have spotted Prompt Lock, the world's first AI-powered ransomware, and Microsoft has quietly made Windows backup for organizations generally available, giving you a way to preserve user settings before Windows 10 end of life. So stay tuned for all the latest. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Microsoft 365, Azure and Windows. This week, Elon Musk announced that he was launching a new venture based on AI agents to simulate Microsoft. So what does he have in mind exactly? Well, this is part of his ex-AI company. This is the company that bought Twitter. And he's planning to use the supercomputing that's available as part of that company and many probably probably thousands, I would guess, of AI agents and the world's best AI talent to try and simulate an entire company. Now, this may seem like something that completely far-fetched and well I think it's probably <laughs> that we're used to now Elon Musk uh, announcing things that seem to be quite far-fetched but this is quite an interesting thing because even if he fails to do this I don't know whether he's serious about this as a business proposition in terms of he thinks this is something that's really going to be uh, a, a result that he can actually use to make money I suspect that you know there is part of that in this project because we all know the history. He's had his public spats with Microsoft and some Altman from OpenAI. So I guess this is a bit of a challenge to them. Well, you know, I'm going to create my own Microsoft, my own version of this company. So AI, I know, is quite a scary thing for many people. It's already starting to disrupt the way we work and it's already starting to change the job market. But there are also exciting things about AI and the things it can possibly do for us. So one of the things that excites me most about it is the possibility to create maybe a, a business or some kind of a venture that wouldn't have been possible before with much less funding and much less manpower. So for instance, you might think that you can set up a business, but you need somebody to do sales, you need somebody to do marketing, you need somebody to do all of the administration. Well, imagine a world in the future where, in fact, we didn't need somebody and special skills to do all of those things, at least at a basic level. And we could get all of that kind of mundane stuff that's required required, done without a massive workforce. So that would enable maybe more individual people to to set up their own businesses and not necessarily have to work for these big tech companies. If you're a developer, you, of course, even today can use AI to spin up a prototype of a piece of software and then maybe use that as a starting point to develop the final product. So things are already moving forwards with AI in the terms of the things that will, you know, liberate maybe uh, you and I, people who, you know, are not Bill Gates, uh, who are not Elon Musk, to do things that have never been possible before. Now, of course, on the other side, there's all of the bad things that can potentially happen. You could have somebody like Elon Musk come along and simulate your entire company with artificial intelligence, essentially take all of that knowledge and skills that you've built up over many years, learn from it, and then create a new product. Now, of course, we can do that today uh, as people, but the process is much harder, much slower, because we don't have Elon Musk's computing power, his supercomputers, and possibly some of the best AI technology in the world to do this kind of stuff. So there are, you know, like everything, many pros and potential cons to all of this technology. Now, we don't know a huge amount about macro hard at the moment. Uh, Elon tweeted about it. I think it was late last week. We do know that it's going to be under his XAI company and it's going to use his Grok large language model. XAI has its Colossus 2 supercomputer, which is going to be utilized as part of this. And they've said that they plan to use a whole load of NVIDIA GPUs to also push this project forwards. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. If Elon Musk was able to essentially emulate the everything Microsoft 
Microsoft offers today in terms of software services, is it something that you would consider using? Or do you think this is just a pie in the sky thinking and that there's no way this is possible with today's current technology? I'd love to know what you think. Before I go on to the next story, I've got a quick favor to ask you. 33% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 13,440 subscribers. I'd love it if we could push that up to 13,500 this week. So if you'd like to see these weekly news roundups from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. ESET this week announced that they'd spotted a new piece of malware called PromptLock, and they're claiming that this is the first AI-powered ransomware in the world. So I was a little bit intrigued by this. How exactly does it work? Is it something that developers are just using AI to create this and to then push it out? It's not quite that simple. So what's happening here is that the hackers are essentially using a local language model on the device itself to generate Lua scripts, which then scan the device and look for data to encrypt and they can later of course demand a ransom to decrypt this. So essentially once this ransomware gets onto the device it's using a small language model from OpenAI and then using Olama APIs to communicate back to the web and to essentially create scripts that are designed to run on that particular machine. So we'll see well what kind of operating system is it? It works on Windows, Mac OS and Linux and it can decide that that. It's all written in Golang or Go, which is Google's uh, lightweight programming language. And essentially the ransomware is generated on the user's device on the fly, depending on how that device is configured and what kind of operating system it's running. The big problem with this for security vendors is because the code that gets generated is potentially different every time, it's harder to spot. So it's not something that can be easily spotted by traditional antivirus patterns, for instance. You can actually have to detect behavior and see what's happening with that script and decide on the fly, is it something malicious or not? And of course, that's much harder to do. ESET says that this is still proofing concept. There's no evidence this is actually being used in the wild yet. But of course, this demonstrates just how AI can be used to create malware, ransomware, and have it evade traditional detection. Earlier this week, Microsoft announced that Windows Backup for Organizations is now generally available. Now, we discussed this, I think, a couple of months ago on the channel, and essentially this is a new piece of software that enables organizations to preserve user settings and any Microsoft Store apps that they have on the device and allow them to log in to Windows 11. It has to be Entra ID joined. So the idea is that when Windows 10 reaches end of life this year, it should be much easier for organizations provided, and of course they're going to use Entra ID to get those settings and applications over to a new device. Now, if you go through this process and save the user's settings, the settings are then applied to the new device or the existing device as it gets upgraded, of course, during the out-of-box setup process for Windows. To use the software, you need to be running Windows 10 or Windows 11 22H2 or later. You must have the August 2025 security update applied and devices must be joined to Entra ID or hybrid joined. When users run on the Windows setup, so the out-of-box setup part of the Windows setup, they will be presented with a list of backups that they can choose and then restore whichever version they want. By default, Windows Backup for Organizations runs on the user's device once every eight days, but it's possible for users to go into the Windows Backup application and manually start a backup. Organizations that want to work with this new tool can configure it using either Imtune MDM policies or group policy. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to grow the channel. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now about a new malware risk that's affecting office users. But that's it from me this week and I'll see you next time.